Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Happy weekend. Today, we have on the bench the Silverstone desktop case that we had seen in another uh, e-waste video that we had completed before. And I figured what we would do is, and I struggled with this quite a bit <laughs> uh, as to what to do with this computer. And, you know, it was staring at me right in the face the whole time, despite the comments and requests and different things focused around the system when I'd asked, you know, what we should build in here, you know, we have a sticker right on the front that says AMD Athlon 64. So I decided just to, you know, go down that path and put what was in this system back into the system in some variety or some form of it. So we have a lot to do today. So let's get right to it. So I think the very first thing what we need to do is kind of go over the components real quickly just to see, uh, you know, what we have and sort of what we uh, what our, you know, what our goal is here. So, again, our goal is to build a computer. <laughs> That's what we're going to do and a vintage computer. And, and I just love the look of this case. I don't have any real desktop PCs um, outside of you know, the HP one we found in the thrift store that we did in the thrifting video. Again, I'm just dropping hints to all the different videos I've been doing on the channel. So please feel free to take a look. Uh, and what I want to do is go over the different components and things that I'm going to put into this computer. And of course, you know, some people may not like this, other people may, you know what, that's what makes the internet go around. So <laughs> we'll continue to uh, build this out. Okay, so the first component we're going to talk about is the actual uh, case itself. So if you haven't seen the video already, uh, please go take a look. But we have the Silverstone desktop case that we did end up finding in eWay. So this computer, uh, this this uh, desktop, we already took it apart, kind of looked at it. A little dirty inside, so we'll get that all cleaned up and all the good things. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, th this screams Media Center PC to me originally when I was looking at it. And, uh, you know, I was kind of struggling with the type of video card I would use in there to, you know, whether it was going to serve that purpose or not. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I just kind of looked at it. So, well, you know, we'll see how it goes through the video and see how these things, uh, how this uh, build shapes up. So the very first thing or second thing I should say is the motherboard itself. So the motherboard is an ECS Enforce 3 A939 Revision 1.0A. Now, that motherboard, this motherboard, we did test in one of the motherboard mayhem videos. And so we do know that it works as an AMD Athlon uh, 64 3200 plus CPU that's in there. Now, this board on record only supports up to a Athlon 4000, but very different variations of that particular CPU. Now, I have an Athlon 4000 plus here as well, CPU. And I mean, I haven't even cleaned the thermal paste off it yet. But the variation that I looked up when it comes to compatibility didn't show as lining up, even though, I mean, I'm sure there's different, com, you know, different uh, configurations of this chip or different variations of this chip in terms of the, uh, you know, the cache or the different, uh, different um, frequencies and things like that. We're going to try that. I want to see if we're able to get away with uh, using this actual processor. And so I even went so far as to get the BIOS update, uh, the latest BIOS update for this motherboard. And that's version 1.0a. This is 1.0f. Uh, so it, hopefully through that process, we can get uh, that motherboard flashed and get the CPU or sort of the, uh, yeah, the support for the CPU there. Now, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Uh, the voltages look the same in terms of the processor. So I'm not worried about doing any damage. It's just about, you know, does it detect it as that or is it going to downscale it based on everything I read on the, uh, the books and the manuals and all the uh, users reviews of this uh, board is that the board will automatically downgrade um, the CPU voltages to protect itself as well as um, just give you lower performance if it's not supported. Enough about that. Let's continue on. I was fortunate enough to find an IO Shield 
for this motherboard. It fits perfectly. And I literally was rummaging through trying to find all the different components that we're going to use today. And I was able to find that, which is uh, pretty darn cool. And we have some various wires and some cables in behind there. And I do have Windows XP because I figure Windows XP is probably the era of this, depending on, you know, I struggled a bit because the processor that's in this is Mark 2001, even though, you know, it says it released in 2003. This processor says 2005 on it, um, you know, in that, in that era. And, uh, you know, I was just struggling with, you know, what do we use for an operating system? And so I think it Windows XP Professional uh, is the best that we have here. Uh, I mean, we could do Media Center Edition uh, as well, which is obviously an option as well, or we can do a later update to that. But um, we'll stick with XP Professional for now. We have a 450 watt uh, ATX power supply that's here. Now this power supply does have the regular Molex, but also has the SATA uh, power as well. And I also have a few adapters like this that allow me to get that. And the reason I'm saying that is even though I've been IDE, 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 today we are going to be utilizing a SATA hard disk drive. Now, um, it is a physical drive, you know, as opposed to using compact flash or some sort of adapter. Uh, I was really just, I still want the original hardware. I'm not, uh, when I say original hardware, just real hardware versus uh, using any sort of uh, flash uh, type uh, uh, cartridges or solid state memory or anything like that. Uh, so we're going to stick with this. And this particular one is a 320 gigabyte um, Samsung drive that runs at 7200 RPM. So we'll get the um, a little more performance out of it with that. And the CPU cooler and fan. I mean, we've cleaned that off in our last video when, when we did do a review of this uh, board to make sure it works. So we do have that. We have a brand new three and a half inch floppy drive, new old stock. So that'll be uh, really good. And I went with black because I didn't have enough gray uh, drives. I was going to, I was looking at going gray with this, uh, you know, trying to match as best I can the aesthetic, but uh, black is probably going to be the best. And we're fortunate enough to have uh, these, um, uh, these drop downs and things like that to cover up all of the uh, components there. So uh, yeah, I think we'll be, I think we'll be good there for what we're trying to accomplish. And we have our optical drive. So our optical drive is just going to be uh, is a TS-H653 drive. I mean, it's just a regular DVD RW drive with light scribe capabilities and all those good things. Nothing fancy, just needed a DVD drive uh, uh, that would be compatible with the system in case, you know, whatever is used for any sort of media type uh, um, applications. So we have that. And then for the sound card, I mean, it has AC97 compatible sound already built onto the, onto the motherboard. But I also have this uh, Sound Blaster Live 24-bit um, uh, PCI card model SB0410 card in my stock. And I figured, you know what? I love Creative Labs. So I may as well you know, either add complications and layer complexity to my, my day, or we're going to really benefit from, from having that. And we also have the memory. So I have um, 1.75 or whatever the memory is of the uh, capacity here. I'm going to be using 1.5 gigs of this. I only have a backup of 256 megs just in case one of the uh, chips aren't working. But um, yeah, I have 1.5 gigs. My intention is to use on this on this motherboard. We have two slots for the memory, uh, the DDR400 memory. So uh, that should be just enough to get us where we need to go. And then we have some screws, we have some alcohol wipes, and of course the floppy disk, which I had mentioned earlier to everybody. And, uh, you know, a couple screws. Um, but the other part that we have is the video card itself. Now, this was one of the video cards. I dug and dug and dug through different variations and themes, what we were going to go through here. This, support, this board supports AGP 8X, uh, and I was going, okay, you know, what can we use to fit into this? I had different variations. So this is a diamond card. Let me just take it out of the uh, protective here. This is a, the model on this card is uh, FX5200 AGP 8X 128 meg with TV out. So that gives us our, uh, that kind of gives us our TV out functionality that, you know, if I was going to go that route, uh, plus it has the DVI and has the VGA connectors on the back. It's not a terrible card uh, in terms of, you know, the model, the FX5200, and it is 8X AGP, which is what the board supports. 
as well as the PCB is purple. <laughs> and so is the motherboard. So it matches just fine there. And so I figured what we'll do is we'll use this card. Now, I have not tested this card. I will say that I have not tested this. So it would be interesting to make sure this works. Now, all the other components, we should uh, be able to get along no problem. And we have tested the board. But again, uh, it'd be good to uh, it'd be good to see what this is, or uh, see how this works. Okay, so after all that, we've done the review of the components that we're going to be putting into the computer. Now, I'd love to just get this computer put together. It's been sitting on the bench for quite a while, or the, I should say the the case has been sitting in my collection for quite a while, and all these different components have been sitting around. And why not put them to good use? So that said, let's get the bench all cleaned up. Let's get it all sorted out and get ready to start installing or cleaning up the case and start installing the components. Okay, here we are with the uh, Silverstone case all front and center. And I just love this little thumb screw in the back here. Just a little twist and we can get the uh, case removed here from the system. And uh, like I said, you remember inside we had quite a bit of dust bunnies and all those good things. So we're just going to get those all cleaned out of the way. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do is just get some alcohol wipes because, uh, yeah, just to get, you know, just do a top to bottom type thorough type look here. I just love the fans that are in the front as well. Gives it adequate cooling. Hopefully we can get those connected, you know, to the board or to adapters on the uh, Molex connectors that we have. And uh, I mean, it's just going to be really good, uh, awesome looking case when we get all this or the system when we get all in here. I mean, it has all the right, uh, you know, front panel. Although, geez, look at all the <laughs> so much dirt here. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not using the vacuum in here or air compressor or things like that just because, um, again, just because of the noise for the vacuum uh, and just uh, I don't want to have to worry about noise suppression right at the moment. For the air comp air compressor, I just don't want to blow it all out here on the on the bench. There we are. I mean, it's not that dirty. I mean, yes, it's dirty, it's, <laughs> but it's uh, it's not like it's uh, unrecoverable or by any means or you know, there's any sort of uh, challenge here. We'll just get a, just about taking some time and cleaning it up. It looks like they didn't use the front I/O um, when they had used it last, and I mean, I don't know if we're going to or not. Um, because it seems to be all strapped up there pretty cleanly um, outside of the motherboard uh, front uh, panel lights, you know, reset switch, power switch, um, functionality and all that good stuff. So we'll see. I mean, I'm not uh, not too worried about having fire wire <laughs> on the front of the system and the board doesn't support it, the board doesn't support it. So um, we, won't, uh, we won't chase it there either. Now that's looking pretty darn good. So I'm going to give it a few minutes. I'm going to let that... Uh, that all dissipate and will, uh, you know, in terms of the alcohol before I start laying the motherboard out and getting it installed. Okay, it seems to be all dry now. And I've also gone and put in the standoffs where they should be for this motherboard. Um, it's pretty uneventful. Just uh, trying to line up uh, where these go and for the mounts for the motherboard. All right, and they're all tight. And they're good to go, which is good news. So we're going to plop in that uh, front I.O. Uh, case shield uh, just to have that installed here in the case. Here we have that installed there now. And so the next step we're going to do is put in the motherboard. Now, uh, yeah, I'm going to put the motherboard in now. I'm just trying to see how are we going to do for access in terms of the processor. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, yeah, because I'm going to change the processor out afterwards uh, if that's what we're going to try to do, uh, just because I want to make sure that I get the BIOS update first before I start messing around with the um, processor, because I want to make sure, because it clearly does not support it based on the uh, information I read, and I know that's semi-contradicting what I said earlier, but I, I just want to be absolutely sure we're in a good spot and we're not... Um, you know, we're not running in any problems because of a processor that's sitting inside there. So there we are. We have that in and I'm just making sure we're all kind of lined up on the screws there and that the IO grounding is, is good to go. It's always a challenge and fun to get that in there. Okay. I'm going to screw that in now. 
I found this on Amazon actually, just uh, something really cool. Just now I have thousands of screws, but they're always kind of laying around in a box. But here it just shows you all the different, uh, you know, CD-ROM set screw, chassis, chassis or chassis, sorry, high strength screw, and uh, you know, mainboard fixed screw, and all those good things. So it just gives you like a breakout. And the irony is, I, uh, <laughs> I almost opened it up upside down. So just a really cool kit for couple bucks on uh on amazon you never 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 know what you're gonna find on there okay i'm gonna work on getting these installed these uh screws and so i like to just kind of do the middle one first in the bottom or in the middle sorry uh, just on the outside just kind of just sets the tone for getting the board kind of held in place so the other ones line up you shouldn't have to force anything that's the key here don't force anything there's no point <laughs> um, if you're forcing it you're doing it wrong so just kind of look back and kind of see what you uh you know what you need to look at and what you need to adjust to get it in there and i always leave that screw slightly loose yeah just slightly loose just so it gives me some flexibility to uh, maneuver the motherboard around specifically for the uh for the case uh, sorry for the um, other other screw holes system. Now I'll be honest with you, I didn't own a lot of AMD. I was going with the uh, Intel for most of my stuff. So actually, I think it was all my stuff. I might have I might have had one. Um, what's going on here? That screw does not want to go in there. Let's just try a different screw just in case there was an issue with our Amazon screw. There we are. Okay, it just wasn't aligned. Okay. I'm just going to let that loose a little bit more again, like I said. And that way we can shift everything kind of down and around and everything where it needs to go. And one last screw. And we'll be all set. Sorry, guys, if I'm in your way there on the camera. Just, uh, there. What I'm doing is when I'm screwing it down, I'm just making sure that there's like a little ground ring type of <laughs> on on the motherboard itself where the screw goes in. It's going to make sure that you're within that kind of area because you don't want it grounding out or anything like that when you're putting it in. And when you're tightening it, tightening tightening it. Oh my goodness! Just make sure you're uh, just make sure you're doing it like finger tight you don't need to drill down on it we have the motherboard put into place so the next thing i'm going to do is install the power supply there just so we can kind of get an idea of everything going on there and uh, i don't want to do any damage to anything around it so we'll get that installed next on the there it is hiding on the bench okie dokie we have that out and I did test it on May 16th. That's what is there. So it's been recently tested, which is good news. So generally these take four screws. So I'm just over here grabbing four screws from our bin full of screws. And we'll get this all kind of screwed in place. I'm really excited to hear about your builds, you know, and uh, I just love all the comments down below. I mean, you guys know this. Uh, anybody who's been watching my channel knows I'm always responding to everybody on all of the uh, comments i do what i can uh <laughs> i haven't gotten in trouble yet so that's good news at home and uh, i get more trouble for storing all this stuff than uh, than actually getting in trouble responding to my viewers so thanks and i appreciate all the support by the way and that goes without saying but uh, i'll say it anyway okay so we have the power supply inserted in there and uh yeah let's just kind of look here so we only have so we have the, uh, what's this label? This is, uh, is it the case fan? This is a so this is power fan there. And up here it says CPU fans. So the CPU will connect to there. And we have system fan. So we have one. I'll see if I can hook this last one up using one of the um, Bolex connectors here. I'll just grab it. So you can see there's an adapter I have here. It allows me to connect this, see? And then that'll allow me to connect to a Molex and then give power to that last fan. So we'll have all three fans kind of 
going to town on cooling this system. So I'll pop that out for now. Okay, let's get some thermal grease here. We'll get that installed. Okay, so we have the CPU cooler installed with the heatsink. We put on the nice layer of thermal grease there, and we have it all connected, which is good to the uh, uh, motherboard fan there. And we're going to do the same. We're just going to connect the power supply now. I just wanted that installed. Other four pin here to connect. And there we are. Get that in there. It's always fun trying to film and get around the camera and all those good things. All right. Now we have that installed. I think what I'll do is I'm going to separate that and tie that kind of up here to this bar. Uh, and I'll actually, I'll do the same thing with all the electrical there, just to kind of get it in a good spot. So it's not kind of flopping around there. I'm currently leaving it off right now because I want to do a test with the system before we start doing that. Okay, let's get our memory installed next, just because we have it there. And so we have our Kingston 512, and we have a Swiss bit, <laughs> uh, one gig. And I'm going to take a little deoxit and spray that in there just because it's been a little while since we did that. And oh, there we are. Okay. Just been a little while since we did that. And I just want to make sure I get the contact cleaner in there and let it do its thing while we're working away on the rest of the system. And it makes all the difference in the world when you're putting that RAM in. Like it just, just goes right in like butter. So really good. Yeah. Okay. And I want 1.5 gigs. I think 1.5 gigs is more than enough for what we're trying to accomplish today. Um, you know, this board does support 2 gig, and we could put 2 gig in there, no problem. But it's just good to get that in there now. Okay, I think the next thing we'll do is we're going to pop in the floppy drive. Let's see if I have that here. Of course I do, because I just took everything and put it away. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have our floppy drive, and we're going to pop that in uh, into the system. And I mean, pretty straightforward. And I had that, uh, I went and found that black uh, cover. I took it out of one of the Acer systems I had. And it's just a blank sh cover because I thought, you know, we're going to look, look at the front of it. It's just going to look nice there instead of having it uh, just wide open. Okay, we're going to get the floppy drive installed there. And let's see what we're we doing for this. So we have our floppy drive going in. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. We'll get that uh, installed. Okay, let's just do a little test just to see how that looks in the front. And we are off to the races there, everyone. That looks really good. Uh, actually, there it is. Okay, perfect. It's nice and flush in the front. That's what I wanted. And uh, we can access that now. And we'll do the same on the other side with the drive. There's only one front. Uh, punch out that's gone so i'm in good shape there as well there we are so far i'm just loving this case i mean if this is what silverstone's still in business so if this is what their cases are like this is the brand i'm gonna go with if i decide to build a brand new computer like something like modern uh, as opposed to you know always working in the retro world oh everything's kind of shifting there okay we have that around there. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do is, like I mentioned earlier, I have the three and a half inch caddy here. So I'm gonna grab the hard disk and wherever I put it, I moved everything out of the way and I uh, hit it all on myself. If you saw the behind the scenes, you'd be kind of chuckling at where everything is. Okay, we have H for no doubt hard disk. Okay, and we need one more. And then we'll be all set for the hard disk. Okay, so we have our floppy disk, hard disk installed here, all good. And we're going to pop that back around and slide that in. It has a little guide there, which is nice. I didn't notice that until after the fact. So we'll put our screws back in here. It's two. So, I mean, I'm not whole, having to hold anything. This case is just so well designed. And I've said that a few times, and hopefully, uh, like I said, Silverstone, 
you're watching this, very happy with your case. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, now that I have that installed, let's install some power to these things and get kind of everything kind of uh, situated here. Here we are, we have the drive power installed there. Hey, be very careful how you line these up. I've done this before where I haven't and I've regretted it. I usually break off a little corner or something like that. And that's no fun when you start doing that. Okay, so we have that installed. I'm just gonna take our extra kind of wire over here that we wired up for the fan and just kind of put it around this corner here because this seems to be the area. Once I get this kind of cleaned up here in terms of wires, this is kind of self-explanatory. I'm not worried about that too much, but up here there's gonna be like a little conglomerate of wires. And uh, yeah, I just wanna make sure we Kind of just hide them all under here and they're kind of out of the way. I might do some cable management there as well, just to you know avoid any sort of issues. So say the one's gonna be the hard disk and that's the shorter run here. So we just have this nice blue wire that we have, which is great. And you know, the way it's shaped here, it just makes sense to put it like this and then we'll come right down into the board. It's just the way the notch is on the interface. Yeah, see, nice and short cable. That's all we needed for that. And we'll do the same thing with the optical drive. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> we have the main board in, CPU is all installed. We have the floppy, the hard disk, the optical drive, power supply. We have the data and power to all of this going on here, except for the floppy, actually. I just noticed that. So I do have a floppy connector here. So we'll get that installed. Now this guy here is a bit long. But yeah, we'll just get it kind of sorted out here. There we go. See, it just cleans up there. Nice and clean. Uh, and uh, I just look at ways to try to clean that up a little bit. Okay, we have that in place now. So we have all of our connectors, all of our power. I think the next step is to do the video card, the AGP card. Yeah, so far so good. And considering we're using 20-ish, almost 20-year-old parts, that we have, uh, that I scrounged through bins. Oh my goodness, I had so many bins. <laughs> so many bins, so many places to look. I've been doing a lot of work with the IDE stuff lately, so I didn't have a lot of the of the uh, SATA stuff. So, you know, digging through other bins to locate that was fun. Uh, insert sarcastic comment here. Okay, so we have that installed now. So our power supply, all good there. Fans are all connected. Um, and don't worry, I'm not leaving the cables like this, everybody. I know, I know, I know. I'm going to get a twist or a cable tie here. I just want to get, um, just want to get tested first to make sure everything powers up. And so what I'll do is there's two empty windows down here. I'm just going to use these to populate those two. A couple reasons. One, I won't lose them. <laughs> That's probably the main reason. And two, just keep the dust and dirt and all that stuff as best out of the system as we can. I mean, as we all know, computers are Hoover vacuums. And I uh, hope everyone's enjoying this type of content, uh, building a PC from scratch from all the different components. And I tried to get something, you know, that was going to be well-rounded to use in the system, you know, in terms of parts and era and, you know, kind of fitting with the channel and what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, I could have even you know, quote unquote, put a sleeper PC in here, you know, something really brand new. Uh, but I have a different idea in my head about how we're going to manage that in the future. I'm just going to make sure we're, we're good. What slot am I addressing here again? Just not here yet. Even my thermal paste, it didn't come for this build today. I thought it was going to arrive today. I ordered it from Amazon. Everything else came and I needed, uh, but this did not. So uh, thermal paste, but I did find another two of it. So we were good for the build. And I'm also going to pop out that uh, CR 2032 battery here. We have a brand new fresh battery installed by Maxell. Okay, so we have that installed. I think what we're going to do now is get the front panel lights and all those good things connected. But oh my goodness, yeah, definitely much heavier now that all the components are inside here. But even still, such a sturdy 
case. I just love it. Okay, I'm going to go back and get these all connected. Okay, we're back with all of the front header, uh, front I.O. lights connected, the power switch, power LED, H uh, hard drive LED, all those good things are all connected, the reset switch, etc. And uh, yeah, I also popped in the front uh, bezel uh, for the spare case here. But I mean, it's looking absolutely beautiful, fantastic. Can't wait to get this fired up. And before I clean up any wires or anything like that, I'm just going to adjust the camera differently and we'll get a monitor keyboard mouse set up and see if we can get this thing posting beautiful silverstone desktop here that we've just built i mean this is the uh true test of what we uh what we can do here so let's uh i'm afraid to hit the power button <laughs> i know we test the motherboard and stuff but it's always that moment so let's hit the power button and uh see what blow up Well, you can hear those two fans in the back kicking on. Oh, we have post. Athlon 64 process, 3200 plus. And we have more than 1.5 gigs of RAM. 2 gigs of RAM, dual channel, 128 bit of memory. You know what? I must have had that uh mislabeled <laughs> but we have two one gig sticks apparently so we have two gigs of ram uh and it's complaining about uh stuff that we need to uh we need to look at that dvd rom drive is uh is uh making some weird noises there you may not hear it on camera just because i have the microphone close to me but yeah, okay. I'm going to turn this off and <laughs> find out what's going on with that. Uh, and then uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back to the screen again. And this is the one we originally had in the, uh, in the computer. And for whatever reason, it was making this weird humming, weird noise. And when I went to try to eject it, it wouldn't eject. So I don't know if there's an issue with the mechanism inside or not, but I wasn't going to mess around with that. Uh, so I've gone ahead and installed another DVD super multi recorder or whatever the heck it is. Just one of those generic um, ones. I'd love to have brand name in there. We will eventually. I mean, just look at the front of that case. Just absolutely beautiful. And it's all the like, aluminum. <laughs> the case is just solid. And I mean, I know I said this before when we reviewed the case before, but that's just a really awesome looking case. You know, I had mentioned this earlier when we were when we were speaking that I was considering upgrading the processor on this computer to the Athlon um, the Athlon uh, 64 4000 plus, but where that motherboard still doesn't say. It's kind of loving that idea, you know, in terms of the book and stuff like that. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'm not going to do that in this video. My goal today is to get this computer up running, get an OS installed on it, and uh, we can go from there. But uh, yeah, I just I just don't want to go down the path of getting this installed or doing any damage. I honestly didn't think I'd be able to go through and dig all these parts out and get into a spot where we'd have a working system uh, almost right off the hop outside of that uh, DVD drive. Let's get this configured just to see what we can do. So F1 to continue, delete the ender setup. Let's go and set up and we will get the, just the standard stuff set up, uh, the date and time, because now that we have a, a battery in there, we should be good. So I believe it's 2023. Uh, it feels a lot longer than that right now based on all the work that went into this. Okay, and it's detecting the uh, it's detecting the channel zero and one first for the IDE, and then it's going into the uh, two and three separately as the SATA. That's what that is. And then to drive A, no problem detecting that. And oh, it shows floppy three mode support. That's interesting. Um, video EGA VGA hold on all errors, and it gives us our memory. I mean, that's looking pretty darn good. First boot is going to be floppy. Second boot, I want the third CD-ROM drive to be second, and then the hard disk to be third. That's uh, what I like to do in terms of booting. Floppy, CD-ROM, hard disk, all good. Just so cool. I I'm stopping for a second just because I have 
three big fan or three fans running to cool this system down that are all connected, whether it's through the power supply, obviously, but obviously to the motherboard as well. And uh, anyway, just it's so quiet. And that's with the case open. Anyway, okay. Uh, so that's all good. And this is where you can go ahead and do some tweaking. I I'm not doing any of that with this right now. Um, I I'm still convinced. I still want to put that processor in. I really, really, really do. I I'm, uh, I'm toying with it on this video or not. <laughs> Um, so the IDE function setup and RAID configuration, I mean, I'm not going to enable the RAID, but that's uh, really neat to have. I mean, I do have a couple extra drives that probably could set up in a RAID configuration, but, uh, you know, for what I do with my systems, until I make it a mental note that this is going to be always like this, uh, I'm not going to make any changes like that right now. Uh, health status, uh, yeah, so it's showing our fan speeds right now, which is cool. So, and the voltages all look good. CPU temperature is looking great. Um, yeah, just really excited, everybody, that we have this up and running. Okay, I think the next step is to get an operating system installed on here. So let's get that going. Now that we have our Windows XP DV, or CD in the DVD-ROM drive, gone ahead and set up everything that we needed in our CMOS. Skip the memory task. We know it works. Well, mostly. Okay. And uh, we're going through what we need to do here. And it should ask to boot from CD. Press any key. Absolutely. Now, the true test to make sure everything works. I think we picked the right processor and right board and right era. Um, of course, let me know in the comments. You might think otherwise, or we might have to do something different in the future. But uh, yeah, I just think it's so cool to be able to use all these components from different things and get them all kind of working in harmony. So it's really cool. And here we are back with Windows XP Professional installed. Uh, I literally have not touched anything. I just started recording once we came up to the screen. Uh, yeah, just awesome love having this i'm not confident though a lot of the drivers have been installed let's take a peek here so we have the microsoft windows xp professional version 2 or 2002 service pack 3 silverstone amd hey it's registered to them <laughs> amd athlon 64 processor 3200 plus with 2 gigahertz and 2 gigs of ram uh, which is awesome. Let's take the device manager here. And so we have a couple audio controllers, uh, obviously, on the board. I'm going to restart the computer and disable the onboard audio. I didn't do that yet. Uh, what do we do for display adapters? Okay, so it did detect the video card, no problem, which is amazing. Uh, let's take a look here. We have the DVD installed. So that's the regular DVD. We have our controllers. Um, and our disk drive is our hard drive, our 320 gig drive. So that's looking fantastic. Uh, and our monitors, no, nah, whatever, it's fine, you don't need any of that. And processor is there. And our sounds, so that's our built on. I believe that's probably the uh, the Sound Blaster Live, maybe? Yeah, it's probably the Sound Blaster Live that's missing there. Okay, uh, let's focus on getting that driver installed. Okay, and we're back, and I was able to get the drivers, I believe, the drivers for what we need. And I'm going to go into the control panel real quickly here. And, uh, not the control panel, sorry. I'm going to go into my computer and uh, see what we have for the uh, drivers for the sound card. We'll get this installed. This is Sound Blaster Live uh, installation files for Windows XP. Okay. Good times. All right, we'll address that in a minute. Um, let's go back to, okay, let's install the Enforce drivers. And I believe that these are just, uh, drivers that I pulled off the ECS website to install the hardware. Yeah, so just selected the IDE controller, the uh, network controller, as you can see, uh, a few other drivers here, uh, that's going to pick on and install for us. This should take care of a lot of the missing drivers that we're showing in the control panel under device manager. And here we are back with the uh, beautiful 
Silverstone AMD computer all built and ready to go, including our drivers. So I spent the last few minutes just uh, hunting down a few drivers and things like that just to clean up the uh, just clean up the device manager. And uh, a lot of that had to uh, be found on the internet because I did not have the drivers here. Now, that said, I had uh, looked also while I was thinking about what was going on at that processor, the AMD uh, Athlon 4000 Plus that I had. And uh, I just said, well, you know what, uh, let's just pop it in there and see. It's feeling awfully brave. And uh, yeah, it doesn't just nicely, cleanly go in. <laughs> uh, it's the same form factor, but I, I looked at it and I could see you could, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but there's definitely some bent pins. Um, at the very least, there was a couple bent pins and then so I fixed those, but there's also some misaligned pins. So I'm going to have to spend some time on the CPU, uh, give it some cleanup here. I mean, there's some thermal grease on it now because of my fingers, but uh, definitely I'm going to do some cleanup, get it all kind of aligned on both directions and we'll should be able to, uh, we should be able to get that going and try that in another video, maybe an upgrade video or maybe a benchmarking video for sure. Uh, okay. That's one thing. Second thing I want to try as well is, uh, I'm going to open up the thing here and uh, pop in my BIOS, uh, update disc here. And this does come with a windows flash utility. Uh, as well. So I'm just loading up the uh, the ability to do that. Uh, so here we go. Here's the uh, WinFlash utility for the CMOS uh, update. I'm just going to go to File and I'm going, I already saved the old BIOS already on the uh, floppy. So just click on Update BIOS and we're going to choose the uh, BIOS file for that. Um, uh, for the one uh, 1 1.0F is what it is. Oh, it says here BIOS file size does not match the main board BIOS. That's interesting because I got this directly from the uh, BIOS for the website. Okay. okay, and so here we are. We have a perfectly operational system that we built together using a vintage Athlon 64. Beautiful PC. Love it. I, I just, uh, I love the... I love the metal case. Uh, I just, I just love it. So I'm going to get all this kind of situated, get the cover back on, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll play uh, play a game and uh, do the outro. So let's uh, let's get all this cleaned up. And here we are, all loaded back up with our beautiful custom built vintage computer. Just love it. I think it's uh, time to get into a little bit of Unreal Tournament and see how well it runs on this computer. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
So there we are. I uh, I think this is a successful build. Well, here we are. We have our AMD Athlon 64 3200 plus computer custom built that we did this together in the Silverstone case that we found in eWaste running two gigabytes of RAM, a 320 gigabyte SATA hard drive running at 7200 RPM, running Windows XP Professional and uh, a uh, FX5200 uh, video card, 128 meg video card. I think this is running just wonderfully. There's so much more we could do to this computer. The cooling in this system is just crazy with the three individual fans, the CPU fan, plus, of course, the uh, the uh, power supply fan. I mean, it's, it's fan central going on in here right now, and it just looks beautiful. I mean total access to all the different uh you know components that you need here and i think i think we did a fantastic job in this uh vintage pc build <laughs> that said if you liked today's video it was a long one but if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you haven't done it already please subscribe to the channel it really helps me out hit the notification button you'll be notified when i release new content such as this Please comment below. I try to reply to all the comments down below. I just love the interaction with all of my viewers. And I'm always trying to work on new content. So we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.